probably people have seen in the press that um, we come under quite a lot of criticism for not having a fully manned army at the moment. Um, our numbers go up every year. We have a pretty sizable budget, a budget that most people would be desperate for, <laughs> um, but we've got to do a lot with it. The budget stays the same, the numbers go up, and so do other economic factors. So each year, we have to make everything we do uh, work a lot harder. We have to really sweat everything that we do. So I want to talk to you about knowing your target audience, the importance of research, uh, data, analytics, um, and really having culturally relevant creative. So um, I've got an abbreviation at the top, sorry. Uh, MTA stands for Main Target Audience. Um, I now work in an environment where I just use abbreviations all the time. When I first joined, I've been here about 18 months, um, I sat in meetings and I thought, I have no idea what anyone's just said. It's all, <laughs> it was like, you say things like ABICD, and I'm like, is that just the alphabet? <laughs> Um, it actually stands for Army Brief and Individual Career Discussion, obviously. Um, but no one tells you that. Um, so uh, what do we know about our audience? So our audience is pretty broad. The Army train people. We give you uh, skills, basically, for the rest of your life. So we're not looking for experienced people. We're looking for people aged between 16 to 36. Um, they've got to be UK nationals, some Commonwealth countries. And that's pretty much it. Um, so, the, obviously, the, the, the main difference here, though, is what the army is. It's a job where you might go to war, which not isn't for everyone, obviously. So, um, we have a number of factors that make our recruitment more challenging. Uh, the first one being the population decline. There are less 17 to 35-year-olds than there have been. Um, unemployment is pretty low at the moment. Also, there's a lot of people in training and education. So with the rise of apprenticeship schemes, there's a lot of people that have other opportunities there. We also have a decreased sphere of influence for the army. Um, the army's reduced in size over the years, so people know less people in the army. Um, and that means they don't know what the army does. Uh, we're also not involved in any high-profile conflicts at the moment. So, uh, believe it or not, that puts people off. People want to join something where they know what they're doing, and some people actually want to go to war. <laughs> um, we did some research about 82% of people don't understand what the army does, what they would do if they joined. Also, the offer is a little unappealing for a lot of people. There's a perceived length of service. You're signing up for something forever. Uh, and the work-life balance... Yeah, it's a 365-day-a-year role. Uh, and actually, the fear of death comes up quite a lot, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, so <laughs> that's where we are. When we actually did the research, now only 7% of our audience know somebody in the army. So as you can imagine, that's, that's quite a challenge because... Yeah, you know, you, you go and fight, but what else do you do? You know, what does the army do? And that's been something that we've tried to, through a lot of the campaign work that we do and the creativity, um, try to uh, show the other side of everything that happens. Um, so when we did a lot of this research, so we do um, a massive study like this every two years, um, and uh, it's a big uh, quant survey, uh, but also we do um, uh, a lot more qualitative data as well in doing this. And we used um, a hatch tank, we called it, where basically we recruited a panel of people for around four weeks, and we dropped questions in and asked them to do certain things. So they did mood boards, they did all this sort of thing about what, what the army, but also other armed forces and what, what it meant to them. Um, and one of the questions that we had were, um, if you were at a party and you saw people from the armed forces, what would they be doing? Um, and uh, the army would be loud and laddish, <laughs> uh, takes the lid off a beer with their teeth, and most likely to be found by a dog walker the following morning in a hedge. So, <laughs> quite funny. However, doesn't really probably get away from the fact of that this perception of what, <laughs> what the army's like. We also asked them to give us images, um, and ridiculously, 
when we asked him to give him images of the army, the number one thing that came up was Dad's army, which I don't think has been on since, I don't know, you know, 1982 or something. <laughs> um, but, you know, we expected there'd be other, you know, other things out there, but no, that is what people think. Um, also, Sean Connery, who I'm assuming might be the James Bond Navy thing, I'm not sure, but he's actually a Russian naval officer in that particular photo, so, yeah, there you go. Um, so, we wanted to understand our audience and what the size of the population were out there for us. Um, so, we, um, we look at people, and actually, in order to deliver the numbers that we need to, we can't only focus on these people at the top. The active considerate, considers, considerate, can't speak, <laughs> um, and the strong contenders, the, the people that we know would want to um, join the army. Um, we tap into these people who we collectively term non-rejectors. So they're people that maybe have never considered the army before. But they're not out and out going to rule that out. But we do also consider the people that it's just not for, um, because actually they might be really important influencers to people uh, that our target audience and the people that are making the decisions, um, or they could be gatekeepers, parents, other family members that people might take notice of. So when you start to look at that eligible population, it's 8.7 million people. When you then factor in the eligibility that we have, that reduces by 35%. So that number keeps getting smaller and smaller for us. Um, it's, it's a real challenge because you have to be British or certain Commonwealth countries. Um, you can't have tattoos on your hands or on your neck or on your face that are visible. Um, you cannot have a beard, which actually for a lot of people now is quite an identity and people want that and they don't want to not have it. Um, people are not as fit as they used to be. <laughs> um, and they're certainly not necessarily army fit. Um, the army still use BMI as a measurement, so uh, the England rugby team wouldn't get in. <laughs> so for us, that's a, that's a you know, it, it's a frustrating factor, but it's something that we have to deal with. Um, the other element that we lose a lot of people through is medical. Um, you have to be in asthma clear for six years. If you've ever had a course of steroids throughout your entire life for asthma, you can't join. Um, you can't have any heart conditions. You can't have any history of mental illness. You can't, you know, there's, there's just a load of other factors that, that come into play. So from an attraction point of view, we're out there trying to recruit. Uh, this year, we need to recruit 80,000 regular soldiers. Um, sorry, attract 80,000 regular soldiers to apply, um, plus the other streams that's uh, just over 100,000 people we're looking at. And we lose, um, I think our ratio is generally around 7 to, eight, seven to 1, 8 to 1. Um, in some areas, it's higher. So in order to try to tap into these people here, um, we've split out our audience into what many people would recognise as personas, but we've called them segments just to be different. Um, we do have little personas that go alongside this, which I haven't shared, but that, that factors in um, the entire of our eligible population. They're rated from the highest consideration, considerators to the lowest, um, but we include all of them because actually within some of these areas, um, people would still be reservists, there'd still be different roles within that. Um, and we look at it in terms of their career motivators and to how we attract them. Uh, and this is just an example. I've got a massive document, which is about 300 pages, which goes through all of the, for each segment, um, where they're likely to be, what, how they're made up, you know, where they are in the country, what media they consume, what they don't, um, all of that sort of thing. And I've just put a couple of um, examples from... Um, what our first segment, which are our sort of core contenders more, um, and uh, one of our other segments there. So that's how we, we try to think when we're creating content for these people. Um, so actually, that there is uh, the theory. So we know who they are, we know where they are, and we know what they have access to in theory. Um, obviously, 
there's an element of actually we have to do it and find out if it works. So that's where data and analytics really come into play. Um, this slide is really busy. Um, <laughs> but um, effectively, what, um, what this is, is a marketing funnel. Uh, so it goes right down from the awareness and in the, intent, uh, the um, interest at the top um, through to the prospecting and the retargeting and the conversion. So, in this sense, it's not a product. We don't want them to buy a product. We want them to make an application and take them through. Um, the, uh, a lot of the focus is at the top in terms of gauging that interest that we're doing. That's where the TV advertising that we do, um, and that piece comes into play. The prospecting is what people who've worked in... Um, Sales would understand that you know, you're sort of going out and we're actually targeting our audience. And that's where we use data a lot and analytics to see whether those people, what they do with that. If they click on it, if they um, click through on one of our adverts, they'll never let go, <laughs> keep being retargeted back and forth um, to come back to us. And you know, for us, this is quite an interesting journey because actually this can be years for people. Um, the army is a lifestyle choice. It's not just a job. It's not like going to, um, you know, sort of apply to be a project manager somewhere. You're actually <laughs> deciding to do something which is probably going to take over a big chunk of your life. You're signing up for a minimum of four years, um, potentially longer, and it's going to move you and your family around the country and possibly around the world as well, which is a great opportunity, but most people don't take it lightly. Um, the data allows us to know at what point we can do things and how long that lasts, um, where we can make short-term... So if we suddenly know we're short on applications one month, there's certain stuff that we know will have an in-month um, uh, uh, reaction. There's certain stuff that we know will take that on six months to, take, um, to, to cause uh, an effect. Um, we also know that people generally take around six touch points before they make an application with us, um, be that a face-to-face -face or um, an advert that they'll get. So, um, talked a little bit around targeting um, and how we do that. Um, frequency is really about your money and what you can do. You can have the greatest creative and know who you're targeting, but if you haven't got the opportunity to get that message out there, no one's going to see it. Um, we do a lot of econometrics um, to understand our return on investment um, and how much, uh, how much everything is working for us. So in terms of creativity, we have to um, try to find that creative sweet spot to deliver a creative that's going to make somebody make that massive choice for us. Um, so we want it to be surprising, we want it to be relevant, and we want it to be authentic. And they're the bits that it really needs to be. Um, Dave Trott, who is uh, um, somebody in the marketing world, um, who wrote a paper a few years ago, um, gave a stat that 89% of advertising is ignored. So in order for us to try to do something, we try to be surprising and try to get our message more into culture and actually break away from it just being an advertising message. Um, so that's where um, this year's campaign, which people may have seen, we launched in January, um, came into play. So the research was telling us that actually people were looking for something, a job that mattered, um, and to be ambitious, um, and that they wanted to do something that was really important. Um, we had a lot of people, you know, employment, people, a lot of people in employment, but maybe not in very exciting employment. Um, and we wanted to try to show them that the army could offer them that. Um, we have a three-year strategy at the moment. It's about to go into its fourth year of planning at the moment, which is about <coughs> belonging. So in 2017, we launched belonging, and it was about the, the army is a place where you can belong to something bigger than you. In 2018, last year, we had the animations that cause a lot of controversy, uh, the prayer advert, um, is it okay to be gay in the army, all of those sorts of things, because we wanted to show people that they could fit in the army, um, and it wasn't just a place for white males, which is what a lot of the research showed us. Uh, and this year we've moved on to, because of belonging, someone like me can do something that really matters. 
This is our campaign architecture, so um, TV adverts are quite a big element of it, but actually it's far broader than that, and we need to touch through the marketing funnel again, which is along the top, to drive people through um, as they go through. So uh, we do a lot of social, paid social elements, radio adverts, um, and the bit that I've got video of next are some of the partnerships that we do. Um, we need to a a appeal to a broad audience. And through our own channels, we've only got that, that uh, the audience that we've built there. Um, and paid media can only give us so much more. So we've started doing, uh, last year we started doing a partnership with uh, Unilad, or Lad Bible Group as they are now, uh, which to, to really, they did a, a lot of creative for us. They uh, produced some videos and went around and did a lot of uh, social activity. Um, and also we bought their media reach, basically, um, and tapped into their channels. So I have... Personally, I think a lot of people have different ideas of what we do as soldiers. It's not all about just um, war and fighting, you know, where we can also do humanitarian work, we will do that. So just also shining a different light as to, you know, what we get up to as soldiers. Today we're just trying to do basic repairs on the, on the building, you know, making life a bit more comfortable for the kids and at the end of the day that's what it's all about. It makes us feel good because then um, we appreciate everything that they come and they do. Mm -hmm. With the betterment of the living standards, the children feel better about themselves and we as staff that work here, we feel better when we're working here. A whole series of these videos. Um, that one was shot as a freebie, shot at the end of, a, um, a, of a, another assignment that we did in Belize. Um, I got to go to Belize, it was very cool. Uh, so we did, uh, we went and did a big bit on the jungle training that people do to try and show what they were doing there. We did some really cool um, videos though. We did a Call of Duty, uh, one where it was actually a real life Call of Duty. We got two professional Call of Duty players to go in and uh, basically play against the army, which was quite fun. Uh, and we had, we've had comedians and some of the sort of presenters from the Lad Bible um, elements who people are aware of uh, go in and become snipers. The videos are really cool. They're quite long, so I didn't put any of them on here, but you know, go and look them up. I can send links around. Um, we also, with all of this, did Insta stories um, and Snapchat stories as well with it, and I've just got an example of some of the activity that we did for that as well. So we did a whole, a whole heap of those sorts of uh, Insta stories, which were really quite fun and quite engaging. Um, this was a series that was following um, some guys through um, basic training. 
and it was uh, it's got to, it's, it's reality and actually it, you know I think we talked about authenticity quite a little bit and people have to see the reality of what some of that's like because actually it isn't for everyone um, I went to an assessment centre last week and um, saw the accommodation block. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> you look at it and think, oh, God. And I said, to the, I said to the guys running it, how many people do you have that turn up and go, mm, not staying here? And he said, actually, not many on that first night, but the next morning they have quite a lot that leave. That think, well, and actually, if you can't stay in an army assessment centre, you have no hope in going on operational tour where you're going to be sleeping in a puddle, probably. <laughs> so... Um, I don't know if anyone really saw much around our campaign launch in January. Um, we maybe got a little bit of press on it. Um, <laughs> no news is good news, as they say. Um, but, you know, if people are talking about you, it's all good. Um, and actually, talked before about um, people not noticing advertising. Um, people block ads all the time. I mean, how many people pay for... Spotify, so they don't have to get ads. How many people pay subscriptions so they can turn off the ads on things? Um, it's we need to do something quite bold each year um, in order to launch our campaigns because we try to get that reach as much as possible. Yeah, we have a big budget, but for TV, it's not huge. For for everything we need to do, it's not huge, and we can't get the reach we necessarily always need to. So. Um, what we generally try to do is by trying to move our advertising actually into popular culture so people start talking about it. Um, and actually by being brave with our work, we can usually do that. And this year, um, by being brave in our paid media space, um, we got much greater effect in our earned space. And in the first week of our campaign launched, we got a PR reach of 4.8 billion, which was quite phenomenal. We would never have been able to do that otherwise. Um, the results of our campaign so far um, are working, and it's because we are getting the creative mix right with that right frequency, um, and we're targeting well. So we know that our belonging campaign is emotionally engaging to our audience. The first bit there, we do brand tracking every quarter, um, and we do um, once a year uh, facial coding on our adverts. So we check how emotionally driven people are when they're watching them. The adverts in the other colour, you probably maybe can't read it from here, are the RAF and the Navy, and we win mostly against those. Yay! Um, <laughs> one, with the exception of one of them, which um, when our adverts don't do well, we tend to drop them. We tend to, you know, we, we can be that agile with what we do because we need to be. Um, in 2017, when we launched the campaign, we saw our applications rise by 31%. Um, and at the end of last year, our applications were on a five year high. So, yeah, it's a tough gig <laughs> that we're trying to do here, but actually it's getting better and there is an improvement story there. Um, this year's campaign launched well in January and we've seen a good number of the applications, but obviously we need to see if that's sustainable and how that goes on throughout the year. Um, this is part of our brand tracking. We know that overall awareness and interest in the army has continued to rise um, and also for parents as well. So. When I say we've got data, we've got a lot of data. <laughs> and it's just about making sure at the moment that it all talks together, it's in the right place, um, and we have, um, we have the proper analytics around it. It's not just numbers. So in terms of takeaways, do you want to join the army? Because I'm always <laughs> recruiting. <laughs> um, knowing your audience, knowing who they are, um, and who you're trying to talk to, data and analytics, be bold, but be you, be brave, but be authentic at the same time, um, and use what tools we have available to you. Um, yeah, I managed to work in, you know, uh, quite unique, you know, there's a work in marketing, but we just do attraction marketing, and that's all we do. Um, I've worked in previous roles where we didn't have anything available, and I tapped into our marketing, our corporate marketing, were able to use some of their campaign tools um, for email campaign to be able to access some of that um, if you can build the right relationships. 
I've put this in here just as a bit of a takeaway if anyone wanted to use it. So this is something that I use for content marketing um, in terms of our planning, in terms of what we need. Uh, so I've just put some examples on there, but um, I'm sure we can send that round if anyone particularly wants it. That is it.